In this problem, we're going to do a proof. So we have two events, uh, A1 and A2, and we're going to prove that if A1 is a subset of A2, then we have this inequality and this equality. So to do this proof, we're going to use um, the axioms of probability. So I'm briefly, briefly, briefly going to write them down here uh, because we will need them uh, in the proof. The first one is uh, that we have P of A greater than or equal to zero for all events A. So this is true for all events A. So for all events A. The second axiom is quite nice. It's that um, P of, you know, the sample space is equal to one. So that's super useful. This is axiom two. And the third axiom of probability tells us that if we take the union of, you know, any number of mutually exclusive uh, events, this is equal to the probability of, uh, you know, the events, the sum of the probability of these mutually exclusive events. So those are the three axioms of probability. So let's go ahead and try to prove this. Uh, using these axioms. So let's start, um, maybe I can I'll start here, proof. Use a different color. Okay, so first we need to think about this a little bit. So um, we have a sub one, a subset of a sub two, and we somehow want to um, create this uh, inequality. And we also somehow want to create this equality. So for this inequality, we're probably gonna have to use this inequality. That's, that's something that will probably work. And then for this, we probably need to use uh, axiom three here. I forgot to write it, sorry. So we need some mutually exclusive events, right? These, these A's are mutually exclusive. Okay, so mutually exclusive. So we do need that. So suppose, let's assume our hypothesis, A sub one is a subset of A sub two. So because that's the case, um, check this out. I think we can, we can break up a sub two. So let's say that this is a sub two, and then a sub one is a subset. So it's going to be here. Okay, this is a sub one. So now I think we can do something like this. Say a sub two. Well, a sub one is a subset of a sub two. So a sub two, we can break it up. Let's write it as the inside piece union with the outside piece, which I'll indicate in red here. So the outside piece is basically everything in A2 that's not in A1. So now we have the inside orange piece, which is A1, and the outside red piece, which is A2 minus A1, A2 set minus A1. These are all the elements in A2 that aren't in A1. In other words, the red shaded area here you see is the same as this, this red set. All right, and then the orange area is the same as the orange set. All right, so now, so note, these are mutually exclusive events. If you take the intersection here, it's the empty set, right? So note A1, A2, A1 are mutually exclusive, mutually exclusive because their intersection is empty. So we can apply axiom three. So by axiom three, let's see what we can do. Use a different color here. Let's go back to yellow. There we go. So P of uh, A2 is equal to P of this union. So A sub one union A sub two set minus A sub one. And so axiom three now allows us to do this. This is, this is axiom three here. Just indicated it again exactly where we're using it. This is P A1 plus P A2 set minus A1. Again, this is because they're mutually exclusive, which uh, allows us to do that with axiom three. Okay, let's see if we can show our first thing. Our first thing was that uh, P, sub, P of A1 is less than or equal to P of A2. So basically here we have P of A2, here we have P of A1. We need to get rid of this. Well, we know something about this, right? This is greater than or equal to zero by axiom one. So this is greater than or equal to P of A1 plus zero, just replacing this with a zero. And this is by axiom one, right? The very first axiom. So this is by, it's really important to write down 
um, when you use the axioms, right? That that's like the most important part of this, you know. <laughs> so, so I, I know I wrote it here, but notice I wrote it again just to really emphasize that's the step, right? And then this is the step where we use axiom one. Now this is equal to p of a one. So we have p of a sub two is greater than or equal to p of a sub one. It's the same thing. So it est as read it backwards, p of a1 less than or equal to p of a2. And that's that's the first thing we had to show. Let me go back up here and show you um, was was that, right, was that. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and write down again what we have to show for the next part just so it's a little bit easier to see. So now we have to, when the claim now is that we had to show that p of a2 minus a1, p of a2 set minus a1 <laughs> is equal to p of a2 minus p of a1. That's the last thing we have to show and we're done. So we have this. We have p of a2 is equal to this. So note, p of a2 or a sub 2 is equal to the probability of a sub 1 plus the probability of a sub 2 set minus a sub 1. So to get this equation that we need, we just need to get rid of a piece of P of a sub 1. So just subtract it from both sides. And so it cancels here. So we have P of a sub 2 sub minus a sub 1 is equal to the probability of a sub 2, going kind of fast, minus the probability of a sub 1. And that completes that completes the proof, right? So really, I, I think the trick is maybe, you know, seeing this problem at the beginning and saying, okay, um, you know, it's a basic probability proof, so you know you're gonna have to use the axioms. So that's kind of a given. And then you see this here, this minus, it tells you you have to use that. So you need to create mutually exclusive sets so that you can incorporate that, so that you can do the problem. And once you do that, um, you know, you get this, this equation here. You say, okay, what am I trying to show? So then we need to show this one here. So, uh, sorry, this one here. So we have to use this one because that has an inequality. So then you look here, you say, okay, I had to get rid of this because you just want P of A2 and P of A1. So how do you get rid of it by axiom one? So you've, you've proven the first statement. And then for the other statement, um, I just wrote this here so we could see the original question. But all you do is use this equation, which again, you got from this creation of just joint sets. And um, you just solve for what you need to solve and you're good to go. So yeah, I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.